Good morning everybody from Jeff's Little Engine Service. I'm going to show you a few different things today uh, on this lawn mower right here. It's a standard six and a half horsepower Craftsman lawn mower. It's the older style, the old dark green ones. And what's going on here is a major oil leak. And the customer has determined the oil leak is coming from underneath the flywheel. So I'm going to show you all how to take this apart and take this flywheel off with a flywheel knockoff tool and replace the oil seal. Let's get going. The customer has already taken things apart, um, but I'll show you how he did it. So you'll need a quarter inch socket to get this off. You take out this bolt and then you pull the tabs out from there. And to remove the gas tank, you have three 5 16 bolts. And once you remove those, you actually have to lift the gas tank up. And it slides right out. See those keepers? To remove this, you have two 5 16 in front. And the other bolts are 3 8 and they're in back here. So before you can remove this, you do have to take off your oil spout, or at least I would recommend it, and it just pulls right off. And then you can lift this whole unit off. Now we're at the flywheel, and this is when we need to use the knockoff tool, which is about a $5, $10 part you can buy. I have two of them. This is what they look like. Basically, they just have two different size holes. I believe this is the one we'll be using. And you screw it all the way down until it touches. And then you unscrew it one full turn. There you go. So we're ready to use this thing now. All right. So we get to use my favorite hammer here. And I just grabbed the quickest lever bar I could find and nearby. You just have to make sure that when you're, what you do with this is you stick it under the flywheel and you pry up, but you want to be careful where you're prying uh, that you don't damage anything. Uh, as you're prying up with the pry bar, you give it a good whack. That's why they call it a knockoff tool. I should say you give it a good knock and then that loosens the flywheel. So I'm going to look around here on this flywheel. I'm going to move the thick portion of the flywheel over to here because I think I'm going to be prying from back here. Uh, there's actually looks like there's a good spot to put this bar in where I'm not going to really harm anything. Yeah, I kind of have it sitting on uh, the breather I'll show you here. Basically that's how I'm prying it and I'm just being real careful as I pry up. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Alright, so let's get to knocking here. Yep, I think I got a good pry on it. Didn't budge, so I'm going to switch it to this side so I don't break anything. Try to get another pry spot going here. Might have to get a different type of pry bar. There we go. See it come loose? I haven't damaged anything yet doing that. Hopefully I never will. Uh, so to get this off, you're going to want to loosen the bale up here. Hold that down and it's easier to lift the flywheel off. I'm going to strap that down so I can come back to work here. Alright, so I have a bungee cord holding the strap down. And so that now I should just be able to lift this flywheel off of here. There we go. One thing I want you to notice is that the flywheel key, which is right here, 
that's the component that breaks uh, if the blade hits something really hard it'll shear this key and it knocks everything out of timing uh, instead of your entire engine exploding it just breaks this key and this is what it looks like and as I'm looking here it, I definitely can see there's not many places you can be leaking oil from you can be leaking from this breather area right there or you can be leaking from the seal and I'm pretty sure we're leaking from the seal from the looks of it what do you guys think I have the replacement seal that's uh, part number 32600 for this model you also have that little plastic spacer that needs to be carefully removed and I'm gonna mark which direction that goes just so I don't forget put a little black sharpie mark on it so I know that that weighs up so I think I'm gonna try and get this seal out um, I don't have a seal puller that's going to work there, so I'm going to use some very thin screwdrivers to poke down in there. So now it's important when you're removing this seal, you do not want to scratch the shaft uh, for obvious reasons, because that where the, that's where the seal sealing occurs. Um, so you can try using some very very narrow screwdrivers. Um, so I think I'm going to grab my picks and some other tools and see what's the best way to get that out of there without scratching the shaft. So I have a variety of picks I'm going to try to, to get the seal out carefully with. A lot of traffic today. First, I'm going to try this pick. I think. Try this pick. Once again, you got to be very careful not to scratch the shaft. Hmm. All right, I have a 90 degree one. Let's try this bad boy. Not having much luck. I think maybe your best bet's just to make a commitment here away from the shaft. Yeah, there we go. So I'm making a little dent in it. <clears throat> then I should be able to get something else down in there very carefully. do end up dinging the uh, shaft you can sand it but you don't want to sand too much and you're better off just not screwing it up being careful right I think we're getting it here boink what do you think folks did we scratch the shaft I don't think so. But you know, I am going to sand that down very lightly just to get it smooth because if you look, you can see it's kind of rusty. So. so here we go. That's what the seal looks like. Hopefully a new one will solve this problem. There 
here's the new bad boy. You'll want to put a light coat of oil on here to help it slide over the shaft and seat properly. Oil around the edge here too. So I have some ultra fine sandpaper here I'm going to be using. 600 grit and I'm going to go real easy because I don't want to screw things up. <clears throat> so I'll just wrap it around like this very lightly. Try to get that surface back to shiny again. I don't really want to remove any metal. I just want to remove that rust. Get down a little bit farther here where the oil seal sits and very lightly sand. See, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to blow some air in there and make sure to wipe it out really good. Sprayed a little carburetor cleaner on a rag. And I'm just going to make sure it's spotless. Don't want any little pieces of anything in there. Because that would cause the seal to not be able to seal properly on there. Alright, I think we're ready for this thing. You'll want to lube up the shaft a little bit lightly with grease as well to get this seal to slide on nicely. And make sure the oil gets all the way around here. All right. the seal good and lubed up with oil too and if you remember if you review the tape the seal was sticking up ever so slightly above the surface um, it looks to me like you just seat it in um, but we'll see how this goes you carefully work it on the shaft so you don't damage anything and you don't really want to well this one's pushing into place. Don't really want it to push into place. Yeah. Damn it. I think I'm screwed. So I think I gotta go now. You can see I accidentally sealed it on that side first. Uh, and now tapping it in place is going to be kind of sketchy. I have this seal installer. It's from another seal, so it doesn't fit this seal, but I'm going to use it to kind of pound it into place. You can use like a socket also. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in a pinch now because of how this is set up. It's kind of cockeyed in there, so I don't know how easily it's going to pound into place. Well, let's try it. Hey, it's going. All right, it's going. So now at this point, I just want to take a view all the way around and make sure that the seal is in the, the correct depth all the way around. And there's my phone ringing. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to use this socket here. It's going to be a good tool to help seat this oil seal. So it's almost in even all the way around. It still needs to go in on this side a little bit. When you're tapping in things like this, you can kind of hear when they seat, if you listen very carefully. So I'm just going to tap all the way around and make sure we're seated all the way around. 
see that nice solid sound all the way around. Yeah. And I think we're still in too far on that side, or at least farther than we are on this side. So give it a little. I think we're in. I think we're in, boys. Yeah, so that looks good to me. So once again, I'm going to verify that the seal is in all the way around the, the same depth before I consider it uh, time to button it back up. And I've done that, so it's time to button it back up. Let's do this. Okay, where did I put that uh, flywheel key? Dang it, I'm always doing this. Setting things down and then it takes me 10 minutes to find them. Oh, looks like it's right there. Perfect. So this key does go in a certain way. And you can see it's kind of, oops, you can see it's got a funky shape to it. So you got to make sure you put it in the right way. And basically where it tapers down, you want to put that down first, pretty much like that. And make sure that your brake is still on. And the reason why you have to put your brake on See that shoe right here? That's what goes up against your, the inside of your flywheel and stops it from spinning. Also stops your blade from turning when you release the bail handle. Let's go ahead and put the ring back on. And it's always a good idea to use a new flywheel key. It makes life much easier. put it up as high as it'll go that flywheel key and it'll stay in place if it's a brand new one and you carefully put the flywheel on over it push it down as far as you can and now <clears throat> put this back on washer and the nut and as you gradually tighten that down it will hopefully put things into place that's the idea anyways now it's important to know this is a torque specification which is 35 foot pounds so I have my torque wrench out looks like this flywheel's going down the way it's supposed to. When you're all done, you're going to want to make sure the gap there is still at 12 thousandths. That's important, the gap between the coil and the magnet here. So at this point, you're going to want to, you're going to have to lock up the engine. A good way to do that is to get a big chunk of wood and stick it under where the blade is. So the engine won't rotate. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use one of these chunks of wood to jam under the blade here to uh, <clears throat> prevent the engine from turning over while I torque down a flywheel nut. I don't know what the best way to do this is. I need to get a blade. There's actually a tool they make that stops the blade from turning. <clears throat> Just jam this sucker right like that. Yeah. Oops, you guys see that? Yeah. 
and hopefully that'll keep the blade from turning while I torque this nut down to 35. Yep, I can do it. All right, we're there. Yeah. So that's how it's done, son. Now we can start going back together. You guys want to watch that too? All right. So remember, I said you're going to have to check the gap here once you get everything back together. And you want it to be 12 thousandths. Feel pretty good there. This is the magnet, this is the magneto or the coil, and you measure in between the coil and the magnet. So that side looked pretty good at 12 thousandths. And I think that side does too, so we're good. All right, back to business here. <clears throat> So, I believe this is what goes on first. Oops. This needs to be swiveled around. I don't know why, how it got over there. But this tube is supposed to be connecting with this. This guy was messing with this thing. I don't know what he did. Wonder if that pops out of there. So I couldn't get that dang uh, plug breather assembly to turn how it's supposed to be. So I just added some hose. Not gonna look pretty, but <clears throat> I don't know how the dude got it like that. So <clears throat> now I think we can put this on. killing me all right so I just gouged my screwdriver down in here and I eventually popped this thing out so I'm gonna turn it the way it's supposed to go here's the old tube turn it the way it's supposed to go and hopefully I can push it down into place yep all right, that works. Now that we have this breather set up the way it's supposed to be, we can go back on here. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Five sixteenths that go up front. two three-eighths that go in the back. I always like to pull this a little bit just to make sure it's in a good position before I lock the bolts down. Not too tight, you can break this stuff, strip it out. You especially don't want to go too tight on these front ones. Very easy to break. Not too tight. Just snug. A little more than snug. All right. The next thing we have to do is put the oil tube back in and I can see 
that the uh, washer or the gasket is still in there. So I'm going to pull that out. And it's still in good shape. I can tell. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. It only goes on one way, like this. And what you want to do for this is you just want to make sure that everything is clean. And when you put it into place, you just hold it down. And while you're holding it down, you tighten up the bolt. And that gives you a good seal, believe it or not. You want to keep pressure down on it so you're seating that rubber gasket as you tighten it up not too tight once again this is very easy a very easy uh, bolt to strip so just snug okay what next you know I think that's it put the spark plug wire back on here no, that's not it. What am I talking about? So next, we have the fuel tank. You're going to want to make sure it's good and clean before you put it back on. Which I can see stuff down in this one, so I'm going to clean it out first. So you have brackets back here. So you want to slide the tank down on. You'll have to take this oil dipstick off to do it and there we go now we just need to put the three bolts in and connect the fuel line found one of the bolts I know where the other two are I'm gonna track those down and uh, be testing this out pretty soon She's a beauty. I haven't put the air filter back on yet, but I have filled it back up with oil and I've put fresh clean gas in it. And I think it's time to test it out. <clears throat> What I was doing there is I was adjusting the governor spring um, there's a little bracket that the springs attached to I'll show you where I'm talking about here let's see yeah see where the springs attached there to that bracket basically you just bend that bracket that way and that pulls that spring tighter and that revs it up more but be cautious because bending it a little bit revs it up a lot 